All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for allowing us to pray for the sick and the, those who need healing. Uh, I really, really, really believe that God does miracles and uh, that prayer works. And so if we didn't, I wouldn't do that stuff, all right? I ain't, I ain't into this whole, like, fakeness. That ain't me. Uh, if you've been around me very long or you've been attending our church very long, you're like, yeah, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> a little too authentic sometimes. Anyway, we're glad that you are here with us today. Um, I just want to say a big, huge shout out and thank you to those of you that served and volunteered last Sunday. Uh, Easter was awesome. We did two services last weekend. Smooth as silk. You guys were fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, our attendance was one of the highest since uh, we've been here, uh, since I've been here. Um, it's maybe one of the highest in this building, in fact, um, since opening weekend, which was seven years ago, I think, something like that. Anyway, fantastic day. God did some crazy things. Um, you may not know this. Uh, this campus is one of three. There's one in Piedmont, one in Mustang. And between the three campuses, we saw uh, 40-something people get baptized. Uh, Piedmont's doing baptisms today. Uh, over 17, 17 to 20, we're not 100% sure uh, how many people got saved at the three campuses. Um, it's just really cool what God is doing through the Bridge Church, and we are a part of that. You are a part of that. And uh, our church uh, had an incredible day last Sunday, and I have to specifically shout out uh, Sammy Stevens and her team. Um, our lobby looked amazing last week. Um, the whole lobby design and decor and all the things that are starting to look cool. I'm going to go ahead and let you in on a secret. I didn't do that. Uh, Sammy helped me not look dumb out there. And so uh, it, she does interior design. And then uh, the balloon arch and all that stuff, I mentioned it in second service, was Jessica Booker. She has a company uh, that does that. So if you would like some, if you need stuff like that, contact her. She would love to help you out. Okay? Got a business. All right. Anyway, we are so glad that you are here. We're in a series or collection of messages called A Picture of Health. And we're going to continue that series today. And we're currently. Uh, almost done. We're almost there. Y'all are like, we have been in this since forever, and it's been good. I hope you've enjoyed it, um, because I've gotten so many positive things. I had actually one person text me and say, does this series have to end? Because <laughs> they've just gotten so much out of it, and you're like, man, I haven't heard all of it. YouTube. Go to YouTube. Uh, check it out. And you're like, I was looking for you on Facebook the other day. That's a sad story of our Facebook got deleted, so <clears throat> we're working, working to recover and restore our Facebook. So if any of you work for them, let us know. We need some help. Okay. But we're still available on Subsplash through our app and Facebook. Or, I'm sorry, YouTube, not Facebook. Facebook, adios, muchacho. Okay. Last week, we shared a message together called Jesus is my healer. And we talked about how he came to heal our broken relationship with God the Father, right? We talked about John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And then verse 17 where it says, for he didn't come into the world to judge the world, but to save it. He came to heal. And we talked about it, um, how God came, or Jesus came to restore our relationship to God. He came to heal that broken relationship. And today, we're going to kind of continue on, and I used this analogy last week, and though it was clumsy, it worked, I guess, where I talked about how when I was in college, I had a knee injury that required ACL surgery, reconstructive surgery on my right knee. Now, some of you are like, two things. One, you just learned I went to college. I know. And two, that I played, <laughs> played football while I was in college and uh, actually got to play, like I was on the field and stuff. I wasn't just, you know, like... I, that's not all I did. I, I mean, I did more of that than I did playing, but that's not important. Anyway, we talked about how that my knee was jacked and that I had to have somebody who knew what they were doing go into my knee to repair it. I, I needed a professional. I needed somebody that knew more than me to go into my knee and restore what had been broken. And so we talked about it in the same way Jesus came to restore. We needed somebody that knew what they were doing and that could pay the price for that. And today is kind of part two of that message. Have you ever seen a movie and part two comes out like 36 years later? We'll take, I don't know, Top Gun Maverick as an example. <laughs> and it's part two-ish. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was Top Gun 2, but was it? I don't know. It was like the same movie, but again, anyway... 
This week, we're going to do a similar thing with this message because I'm going to continue that analogy. I'm going to carry that analogy of knee surgery over because I think it's really relatable. And then uh, I found out this week there's some people that have to have knee surgery, and I'm like, sorry, I didn't mean, I wasn't trying to prophesy that. Anyway, but today is kind of part two of that, and we're going to start in 1 Peter chapter number five. And so, um, as we do here at the bridge, uh, if you can and are willing, if you would stand to honor the reading of God's Word, we don't do it as a commandment, we do it because we love God's Word. And if you're unable or unwilling, perfectly acceptable, all right? We're going to read in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse 10. The Bible says this, In His kindness, God called you to share in His eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. In other words, we get to be saved. Because God is kind. Isn't that good news? That's so good. So after you have suffered a little while, a lot of people want to preach this verse on that part. We're all going to suffer. Yeah, we got that part. Let's get to the next part. He will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. This morning, I want to share a message with you entitled, Healthy Healing healthy healing. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that you are a healer. We pray that you would be so today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Um, There's an interesting thing that's true about healing, and that is this. We can impact it. Like how well something heals, we can sort of have influence in that place. Like, we can make it better or worse. You're like, how's that true? Let me show you. You tell your kids when they get a bump or a bruise or a scrape especially, if they bleed, what do you tell them? Don't pick at it. Why? Because you want it to heal. They're picking the scab off. Uh, Some of us know that person that picked those scabs off and did gross stuff with them. I don't want to be more descriptive because some of y'all just be like, "Mm mm-mm, Right? But we always, like, who else was a scab picker besides me? Anybody? Okay, I always, like, the scabs didn't survive very long at all. I peeled them off. I enjoyed the pain of it. It was weird. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, bleed again. And then if you're a dude, you squeeze it to make it bleed. Why do we do that? I have no idea. Anyway, all the girls are like, gross, that's disgusting. All the guys are like, yeah, that's what we do. But we can impact how well a thing heals. We can put medicine on it, right? Especially like a little cut or a scrape or a boo-boo. Like if you've got little kids, you can impact how well your kids heal because you just kiss a boo-boo and it makes it better, right? My Mom, will you kiss my boo-boo, right? Is that what you do? And they're like, oh yeah, fine. And they're magically better. Um, I had a, t- <laughs> this is a true story, I had a teacher one time, she would always have this one kid that came in, every, um, he would come in all the time, hurt, sick, whatever, but really what he wanted was aspirin, and she would give him a Skittle, and he would eat the Skittle and think, okay, yeah, I'm better, <laughs> and it was like, what? You just, sugar high, okay, whatever. But all of us experience healing at some level, right? We, we all have the deal, like when I had my knee surgery, I could have, I impacted how my knee healed. I could have made it way worse. I could have tried to do something too soon. I could have waited too long. I could have not done the things that were required for it to heal healthy. There's a scar on my knee, and we're going to talk about some of that stuff, but I could have made my knee situation way worse if I tried to do something it wasn't ready to do yet. Many of us face similar challenges in our lives. Many of us try to do something too soon or too much or put too much stress on a situation when it's just been fixed. And we force it into this place of it's got to do this, but anything you force, you will have to fix. And so we just read that Jesus makes it possible for healing to happen in a healthy way. And so I want to talk this morning about how to heal healthy. Um, there's some things, like I said, that we can do to make it better. Don't, don't pick at it. we got to keep the wound clean to, inv- uh, to avoid infection, right? Like, so when I had the surgery, they wanted me to clean the little scar that I had. They wanted me to clean it, but I couldn't take a shower. Like, I had to cover it 
and I had to clean it specifically in a different way. I poured uh, the hydrogen peroxide on it. I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. And it's just like, shh. Who does that still? You still love the, oh, me too. I love to watch it burn. Anyway, y'all are like, Brian, you like pain. What is your problem? I just think it's cool and you just, you know, the bubbles. Anyway. But so uh, for a wound to heal healthy, you have to keep it clean, right? We have to do things like that. We don't pick at it. We don't want it to get infected. And as we just read, Jesus allows us to heal in a healthy way. And the first thing that he does is he restores us. Now, we talked a little bit about restoration last week, and that's where we're going to pick up today. Last week, we talked about he restores uh, us to relationship with him. Like, That relationship from us to God was broken because of sin. We talked about this last week. And because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, he restored us back to relationship with the Father. That we can be known as sons and daughters. That we can be part of the family. In fact, Psalm 51, David writes it this way in chapter uh, 51, verse 10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal or right spirit within me. Don't banish me from your presence, and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Then catch verse 12. Restore to me the joy of salvation. And make me willing to obey you. One of the things that God restores us is he restores us with joy in him. Did you know you can have joy in your salvation? Here's what's crazy. Some Christians are like, I'm a Christian, I can't do that. What? Well, you know, because of my religious beliefs, I can't go, I can't do. Where's the joy in that? Jesus didn't make you uh, uh, have a relationship with the Father so that you could be all like, God's not fun, please. There's supposed to be a joy in our salvation. There's a place where we can have joy over happiness. Happiness ebbs and flows. It comes and goes. It's highs and lows. But joy, you can have a joy in your soul that is beyond everything else in the world. See, he can restore joy in your soul. But we can can impact this, this, this restoration of joy. We can impact it. We can allow things outside of us to infect us. And when we pursue our own happiness over his joy, it will always end in infection. You will always come up short when you pursue happiness over his joy. You will always find yourself longing for something more when happiness trumps joy. You're like, Brian, those are the same thing. There you're not. They say money can't buy love. They Money can't buy happiness. And then the joke is, but it can buy things that make me happy. You know what I mean? What you can't buy is joy. I was talking, who was I talking to? I was talking to Dee yesterday uh, at men's breakfast. Think of all the famous people who are quadrillionaires that have $11 billion and still ain't happy. They don't have joy. And they write songs about being happy, and they write songs about, hey, I'm so happy, and they do all these things. But if you watch their life, you can see they have no joy. When you pursue happiness over joy, it will leave you lacking. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Um, Like I said, I currently, still to this day, had surgery about 3,000 years ago. But to this day, I still have a scar on my knee. It's pretty. It looks good. I used to love it when I was a college kid, and it finally healed up, and I was like, yeah, I got this scar on my knee. (laughs) It was ridiculous. Guys like scars for whatever reason, but the reason I have a scar isn't because I blew out my knee. The injury didn't cause the scar. The process to fix it did. The surgeon made the incision. There are things in our lives as we start to restore our relationship with God that he wants to go in and cut away. 
There are things that we've attached ourselves to. There are maybe friends. There are maybe habits. There are maybe places. There are maybe stuff. There's fill in the blank things that we've attached ourselves to that when the healer comes in to fix it, says that has to go. And he's the one that makes the incision. I remember before I had surgery, the doctor was like, I don't think it's as bad. I think what we're going to get to do is an arthroscopic surgery. We're just going to put some cameras in there and like look around. Probably it's just this, but if it's an ACL, we're going to have to make a small incision. No problem. I just want you to know it's always a small incision when it's not happening to you. It's just a procedure, unless it's you. I'm like, you're going to cut me open? He's like, if we're going to fix it, I'm going to have to get in there. There are things in our lives that as we build our relationship with God the Father, he, ch he challenges us and changes us, and some of that stuff has to be cut away. Some of the healing afterwards in my life and in my knee was from the incision the doctor made. This is a tough thing to talk about, isn't it? Because God wants to take and some of this stuff that we have in our life, Jesus talks about it too, there's things that are going to be pruned away. And if you don't allow God to prune you, you will never be as productive or healthy as he wants you to be. And you're going to carry bad things that you were never designed to carry. And you're going to have this wound in your soul that will never heal because for it to be healed, the surgeon has to go in and fix it. He has to create another opening. He has to create a space. See, for our relationship to grow healthy, there often has to be some things that God cuts away. And when we keep it clean, <laughs> when we keep that, that area of, in, uh, of, uh, in, uh, where he's invasive, right, where he's gone in and fixed it, when we keep that clean, the wound heals. But... If we allow the thing that was broken on the inside to stay broken, the wound will eventually kill you. You don't die from scars. You die from open wounds. And so when somebody goes in, the Lord, goes in and fixes, in my case, this knee, or in our case, spiritually, the Lord goes into our heart, He will heal it up. He will sew it back shut in a way, but it's our job to allow the healing to happen. It's like I said at the beginning, we can impact that. Because we allow infection to get in. We allow other things to happen inside of us. And one of the greatest areas where infection comes in is in the area of unforgiveness. Maybe we don't forgive the people that hurt us. That person, that pastor, that church, that dad, that mom, that family member, that best friend. We don't, we don't allow the people or person or things that hurt us. We, we hold that grudge against them. And we allow unforgiveness, that, that ex-spouse, to live inside of us and cause a toxic reaction in our healing process. Maybe it's not your ex-spouse. Yet. We allow the infection of unforgiveness. It turns into bitterness and it ruins everything inside of us. It steals joy and we fake happiness. It, if, we'd, if we don't allow forgiveness to come in, unforgiveness will turn into an infection. It's toxic for your soul. And it happens because maybe you were offended. Can I just say this? I, I said it to somebody the other day. We are all going to be offended. Every one of us will be offended at some point in our lives. Maybe intentional, maybe unintentional. It's irrelevant. 
to stay offended is our choice. To continue on being offended. I'm not saying what they did was right. I'm not even saying what they did was excusable. I'm not saying it's okay. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, I choose to stay offended. But we're not talking about forgiveness today. Okay. (laughs) Just don't forget that we are forgiven much, so we must forgive much. If you carry unforgiveness and offense in your soul, it will keep you from healing healthy. Jesus didn't come to restore our relationship to the Father through forgiveness so that we could stay toxic with unforgiveness. He wants to restore you. The second thing that he said in 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse 10 is that he supports us. He supports us. When I had my surgery, my knee was repaired, but it hadn't healed fully. I mentioned last week they had me on my feet like the next day. All right? Well, here's what they didn't do. All right, take off, running, go. That, that's not what they did. In fact, while I was on my feet, holding on to this dumb, like, IV thing that I'm pretty sure at the time I could have just gone and broken it in half, so I was nervous. But on this side was a physical therapist. They had the belt around me, so if I fell, they could do... (laughs) Felt like the kid on a leash running through the mall. Weird. And they were like, okay, take a step. And I was like, left? And then I was like... Because I didn't want to bend my knee. Hmm. When you first have that relationship restored with the Father, you're not going to walk right. Your walk's still going to have a limp. Your walk's still recovering from some surgery. Your walk's still recovering. But you have to walk. But here's what's cool. He will support you. Check this out. Romans 8, 26 through 28. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. So how does he support us? With the Holy Spirit. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Verse 27, And the Father, who knows all hearts, How many hearts? All of them. You've heard me say this before, but the original language, the word all, translates into all. That's right. Very good. The Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us as believers in harmony with God's will. When the Holy Spirit's praying through you and praying for you, He's praying God's will for you. Check that out. But I don't know what to pray. It's okay. The Holy Spirit's got you. I don't know how to heal. That's okay. The Holy Spirit's got you. I don't know if I'm doing this right. It's okay. The Holy Spirit's got you. He's going to support you in your weakness. Verse 28, this is the one you've read on your grandma's throw pillows. And we know that that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. God can take the wounds from our lives and work them together for our good And use them for his purposes. So when I got hurt, they gave me a knee brace. This is my knee brace that I played in once I got a little bit healthier. And this knee brace is called a derotation brace. I know you wanted to know that. And the way they did this back in the day, this was, again, 3,000 years ago. This now belongs in a museum. But they would have you stand like this before surgery. And they would shape this thing to your leg. So this is actually the mold of what my leg looked like when I was in college. The front end of this is the size my quad was. My, I put this, I showed some people earlier, it's like this much bigger than my leg is now. And they're like, you missed leg day. And I was like, shut up. I don't squat like that anymore. But I had to have this brace. So the intention of this brace, I looked it up. It's used to reduce symptoms of instability and to protect the recently repaired knee joint. That's what this brace is designed to do. Because my knee wasn't all the way stable yet, I needed support in my life 
to help my knee not do bad things so that it could heal healthy. Listen to me, you need support in your life. As a follower of Jesus, you need support in your life. He said one of the ways he's going to support us is through the Holy Spirit. It's one of the ways that he supports you. There's another way, though, and we're going to talk about it because it bleeds into the, the next thing. Number three is he strengthens us. One of the ways that he supports us is also one of the ways that he strengthens us. See, back to the knee. After I had surgery, I almost immediately began strength training. And it wasn't just on my right leg. My strength training included my whole body. Like I had to do core stuff, and I clearly gave up. That's not that funny. (laughs) I had to get stronger. My whole body had to get stronger. Why? Because everywhere else in my body was helping my right leg not be a drag. Like it was just trying to help. So I had to strengthen my whole body. Okay? Strength training was important. I worked my core, I worked my upper body, I worked my legs because the stronger I was overall, the better chance I would have at a healthy healing. The Lord wants to strengthen you. How does he strengthen us? He strengthens us with his word. He strengthens us with his word. He supports us with the Holy Spirit and he strengthens us with his word. Colossians chapter number two, verses six and seven. Now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Continue to follow him. How do I do that? Read his word. He'll tell you the next step. This is the mission statement of our church. We want to help every person take their next step closer to God so that they can carry hope into the world. We want you to do that in a healthy place, healthy heart, healthy home, healthy pace. How do we do that? Continue to follow Jesus. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong. He strengthens you. How? Following him. Letting your roots grow down into him. We have this responsibility. See, rooting myself in his word strengthens my soul. One of the other ways that he supports and strengthens us is with each other. He will use other people to strengthen and support you. When I first started walking before this brace was able to be put on, that physical therapist walked beside me. And yes, the Holy Spirit walks beside you, and yes, the Lord walks with you, and yes, all those things. But listen to me, you need God-centered friendships. You need, we are not a place that says, you can't have any friends that don't love Jesus. Break all the friendship. That's not, we're not doing that. We want you to carry hope into that world. Some of y'all are like, well, this is why I hang out with all the sinners. Listen, Jesus hung out with sinners. No, 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 sinners hung out with Jesus. There's a difference. We don't have time to preach that. You need a support system in your world. Yes, you need the word. But yes, you need other people in your life. Yes, you need other humans who are God-centered that want to see the best things in God's will for you happen in your life. It's why we love groups. It's why we do men's breakfast. It's why we're doing a women's day next Saturday. We want you to get connected. We want you to have people that will be there for you when you need somebody to pray with you. We want you to have somebody that can help support you when you're going through a garbage day. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 says this, a spiritual gift, talking about the Holy Spirit, is given to each of us. Look at your neighbor and say, you're an each. You're an each, not an itch. Don't be rude. Each. Spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Do you realize the spiritual gifts that we've been given are so that we can help each other? We're supposed to strengthen one another. Colossians 3, 12 through 17, I'm going to fly through this. The band will go ahead and come on up. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If somebody like that shows up when you're bitter, they can help you get okay. If somebody shows up in your world who's having a healthy week and you're having a horrible week, someone like that in your life can be an encouragement to you. Someone like that in your life can help you. Someone like that in your life can pick you up when you're falling down. When your soul is wounded, they can bring restoration through the power of friendliness and kindness and patience. Verse 13, make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive each other. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. We talked about that a second ago. Y'all thought I was just making that up. It's actually in the Bible. Look at there. Verse 14, above all, 
Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule your heart. Peace will bring health. For as members of one body, you're called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's why you're supposed to sing in church. Hello. To God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come together, we have this incredible opportunity to be support for those around us. To, to help so they don't get hurt again. This silly little knee brace protected me so much when I first started playing ball again. People thought it would slow me down, but it actually helped me run faster. You're like, is it like shoes? No, your shoes make you run faster. I know. But because of the confidence I had, because I knew my knee was safe, I ran faster. Those of us in this room who have a healthy relationship with Jesus should realize that the confidence we have in one another should help us all move faster. Not at an unhealthy pace, but with more confidence. Even if you've made a mess of yourself in the past, you can still be helpful. There's a story, and I don't have time to read it, so I'm going to tell it to you about a guy named Peter in the Bible. And Peter is one of Jesus' disciples. In fact, we just read 1 Peter chapter number 5. He's one of the apostles. And before Jesus is crucified, he says to Peter, he says, look, you're about to deny me three times. Like, you're about to deny you even know me. And Peter's like, <gasps> he's all aghast. He's like, no way. And Jesus says this really interesting thing to him in Luke chapter number 22, verses 31 through 34, if you want to read it. He says, you're going to deny me, but after you've repented, strengthen your brothers. Jesus knew this dude was about to blow it. Jesus knew he was about to say, I don't know that fool. He said, you're going to do that. Cool. After you repent, though, I need you to jump back on. I need you to strengthen your brothers. I know you're going to mess up. I know you're going to make a mistake. You're going to literally deny you even know me. I need you to strengthen your brothers. Jesus is crucified. He's risen again. And after he's resurrected, he tells the disciples, go get, go, he says, go get the disciples and Peter. And then he has breakfast with Peter. And maybe you know this. You were raised in church and you know Peter denied him three times. And Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He asked him three times. He accounted for all three. And you know what he said? Go feed my sheep. Go feed my lambs. He restored the man and renewed his purpose. Even though Peter had denied him. Even though Peter had said, I'm never going to do that. Are you kidding me? And then straight did that. I know none of us know somebody that said they would never do that thing and then they did that thing. I know none of us know anybody like that. I, I, was, I was that person. And Jesus restores the man and renews his purpose. Which is no reason or no wonder why Peter then writes, he'll restore you, he'll support you, he'll strengthen you. And then he'll place you on a firm foundation. And you're like, Brian, you didn't get to point number four. That's because Jesus is the firm foundation. You see it in the conversation he has with Peter and Luke and then at the end when he's resurrected and he's having breakfast with Peter. You see it. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 11 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to invite you, encourage you, to look in the mirror a bit and say, are you healing healthy? Are there areas in your life where God has had to cut some things away and you have fought the healing on that? 
you don't really want to let it go, so you keep like putting it back in. Are there places in your life where you need to allow forgiveness to get, uh, unforgiveness to get out? You need to allow forgiveness to reign so that the infection can get out of your soul. Are there places where God's still working and you need him to continue to heal? Because he has a plan for you to heal healthy. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Maybe you're in the room and you say, Brian, um, the first place of healing that I need is I need to build a relationship with Jesus. I, maybe you've been saved before and you've just kind of drifted away or maybe you've never even accepted Christ as your Savior and you would like, you know what, you're like, I need to do that. <laughs> like step one is get restored back to the Father in relationship. And you would say, Brian, that's, that's me. I, I need to do that. Can I just see your hand right where you are? I'm not going to ask you to come forward or anything. Yeah, anybody else? You can put your hand down. Yeah, anybody else? Awesome. Maybe you would say, Brian, there's a place where I need healing. Maybe you've got a relationship with Father, but man, there's a place you need to be restored in your healing. And not just the physical kind that we prayed for earlier, but in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, you need to do that. Can I just see your hand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hands down. Third thing is this, and you're like, three? Wow, Brian, I know. There are many of us that are healed. We're living as healthy as we can. It's not like we're perfect, but man, we're in a good place. And God is starting to call you into these purposes and you're disqualifying yourself because of a past, because of something somebody said, you have not started operating because you're clear to play ball. And the Lord's saying, it's time for you to start being an encouragement to others. And you know, he's challenging you forward today into next steps. Can I just see your hand, whoever you, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna invite everybody to stand with us this morning. If our prayer team would go ahead and come forward. Kelly's going to lead us in a chorus. Glenny and Amy and Kim and Pastor Cody are going to be down here. If you raise your hand for any of those reasons, whether it's to say, I'd like to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, we want to pray with you. Or maybe there's just an area you need us to pray with you about so you can have healing in that space. We want to pray with you there too. So I want to invite you. If you'd like to receive prayer this morning, step out from where you are. Go ahead and come on forward, and we would love to pray with you. Lord, we pray right now that you would do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and step on out. We would love to pray with you. this prayer with everybody in the room this morning. So if you would, and you mean this, this is a prayer to receive Jesus. And 
so if you would, just everybody in the room, just repeat a prayer similar to this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same words as me, but just say something along this line. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross. I ask you now to forgive me of my sins. I know I've blown it. I know I need you. And I ask you to come into my heart. Lord, I believe you are who you said you are. And I believe you're the only answer for my salvation. Come into my life. Help me to live for you. Help me to heal the right way. And help me to have a restored relationship with the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning from your heart, the Bible says that you're saved. And the Bible goes on to say that you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And you're like, yay! Here's the thing. After that surgery, there's still some recovery time that it takes. You're still going to have to recover. I want to encourage you. If you need to get in a group, get in a group. If you need to talk to myself or Pastor Cody, we would love to walk with you. Because God loves you so stinking much. He's so very, very proud of you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for today. God, I pray that you would do amazing things in our hearts this week. Keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, if today is the first time you've been with us, let me just say a huge thank you for joining us today. I want to invite you to stop by Starting Point. It looks like it is Taylor and Sarah. Is that who we got? And Precious is running away. Cool. Um, go see them. Go see them. Today's the first time. There's a communication card right in front of you. Take that with you over there just follow up with you this week. Also, if it's your weekend to tithe or give offerings, we'd love for you to do that as well. The way we do that here is either through the app or in the offering boxes attached to the back wall. And then Saturday at 4, girls movie night right here at the campus. Make yourself available for that. God bless you. Have a great week, and we will see you next Sunday. Be safe. God bless.